Hi, I'm Nate, and I'm going to walk you through our catwalk and pipeline system. This is an incredibly versatile collection of pieces that can build a variety of features usable in a whole bunch of different locations. Let's dive in and take a look. All right, so let's look at all the pieces in the catwalk and pipes collection. It's important to note that all of these are prototypes, so our final pieces once they have their final engineering and factory finish, uh, some of the details may change a little bit and some of the details may be sharper. Uh, so everything could adjust a little bit, uh, particularly anything that doesn't fit perfectly. Starting here, we have the two inch catwalk. Uh, this is half an inch high, just like all of our floors in Starforged. It's two inches long, one inch wide, all true measurements like all of Starforged. Uh, this has catwalk, texture on the top and pipe texture on the bottom so you can use these pieces in a variety of ways just like all the pieces in the set it's a 360 sculpt so there is sculpting on all sides so you can show any size should look good if you see it now this piece has five biscuit slots so there's one on either side here one on either side here and one on the top now this allows us to insert our flat biscuit pegs if you want to stick a bunch of these together or stick them together vertically. It lets you connect your pieces for secure builds if you're doing elevation. It's important to note because these are prototypes, the biscuits are a little stickier than when in their final Dwarvenite. There's a little more give to Dwarvenite. This resin is pretty rigid. But this gives you a great sense of what this final piece will be like. And it's in this sort of warm silver color that all the whole family is in. Next, we've got the 4-inch catwalk. This is very similar to the two inch catwalk, except it is four inches long. The rest of the dimensions are the same, half inch high, one inch wide. I didn't mention it has the one inch grid is baked in there. So these lines are delineating the one inch grid. If you're doing tactical movement, you know where your minis are on the uh, one inch grid. This also has pipeline texture on the bottom. This one has little hatches, whereas the two incher had a little wheel and hatch so slightly different texture on the bottom but they will make a nice cohesive pipeline you can build them in line together here we have the catwalk corner uh, so this has a two inch footprint but it doesn't fill it all because it goes around a nice 90 degree corner here catwalk texture on the top pipe texture on the bottom half inch thick just like everything else this one has these little tiny cleats on here so that it'll sit nice and flat so you can build it flat and it won't tip over as well as it helps playability if you want to put miniatures on it when it's a pipeline in fact all of these pieces have some flat points on the top so that you can put your minis on there and have them be playable it's important to try and maximize their playable space all of the catwalks pieces are designed so that if you put two of them together they'll form a pipe looks like a pipeline so you get dual duty. So you can put two of these together in the biscuit slot. These vertical biscuit slots are designed so you can put a biscuit there if you want to biscuit them together so they'll be really secure. So you can do something like that with a four incher and then pick it up and use it as one solid piece. And same with the two incher. And you can connect these together and make long pipeline runs. Next we have the half inch catwalk extender. So as the name implies, this is half an inch long. Uh, the rest of the dimensions are the same as the rest of the pieces. It's one inch wide and half inch thick. Has the pipeline texture on the bottom, catwalk texture on the top, and it has a baked in half biscuit here. So this lets it pop into any biscuit slot like that and extend your run by half an inch. This is mostly used if you're trying to center back onto the one inch or you're going around a corner and you're off by a half inch. We have a lot of centered biscuit slots that are off by half an inch, so this lets you uh, get back on and connect to any of those biscuit slots. When we walk through some builds, we'll show you exactly how this thing works. You can also actually use it as a little uh, extender on any of your biscuit slots, right? You can put it on your, your core pieces or on the sides of your uh, sides of your catwalks and whatnot to extend just a little bit too if you need. We have the pipe terminus. This is one inch diameter pipe all around. It is inch and a half high. This direction is an inch high. 
this direction. So using a couple of these oriented different ways lets you get to some different heights if you're doing 90 degree turns. It has little cleats on the side so it'll sit flat if it's on either side. The texture here is a little rough in the prototype. Uh, the final will be much more crisp. But what we've got here is this is a four-way biscuit slot. So this lets you put biscuits either horizontally or vertically. So if you're trying to connect, trying to connect it with a pipeline with these biscuit slots, you can put it like this way or this way, and you can still biscuit it all together uh, because you have you can rotate this 90 degrees and they'll always still line up. So it lets you change directions on pipeline runs and lots of fun shenanigans. We'll show you in the, uh, in the sample builds how we can utilize this thing to great effect. Also fantastic for just terminating a run right into the ground, right? You can have pipeline just go right down to the ground and end. Finally, this is the pipe end cap biscuit insert. It is a half circle. It's one inch wide, half inch high. It has a little half biscuit on the back. And this is used to pop into the side of any of the catwalk pieces if you want to seal it up and make make it look like a uh, solid pipe or whatnot. You can also put it on the edge of any of your core pieces. Anywhere there's a biscuit slot, you can use it to sort of cosmetically dress that biscuit slot. In the back here, we have the adjustable catwalk ramp. Just like the rest of the pieces, it's one inch wide. It's half an inch thick. Its length is a little odd. It's about four and five eighths inch long because it's designed to be used at an angle. It has the same texture on the top as the rest of the catwalks and has some, some decorative pipe texture on the bottom. This is all very rough texture. Our final will be nice and smooth and crisp. This prototype is particularly rough here. And it's important to note it ends, it terminates in these little hooks. So this is generally used in conjunction with this is the ramp cleat biscuit insert. So this will have a little half biscuit baked into the back. It's an inch wide, half an inch deep, half an inch thick, and it has this ramp cleat bar here. So you can hook the hooks on the ramp over and then adjust the height of the ramp. So you can pop this into the side of a floor or a pylon or a side of another catwalk, sort of anywhere that you want to attach a ramp, this biscuit this prototype biscuit isn't gripping because it's, it's undersized, but it'll it's grip there, be nice and tight. And that will let you then adjust. You can build to sort of diff any different height you want. You can build in the ladder. The uh, ramp should just land nice on the floor. If you want. So it's got, a, it's got kind of an odd length because it's got a bunch of different height variables, right? You could go anywhere from an inch high up to, I think, two and a, two and a half inches high. We'll have to measure it out in the uh, sample build. Also important to note, it has these little raised cleats on here. So Toby sculpted these little tiny raised nubs on there so it would catch the bases of miniatures. So if you're using this at an angle that's intended to be used, it's still playable. So you can pop uh, your minis on there, different heights. And it also works with hollow bases. You can slide slide the base over so your, uh, your space marines can vessel up in this playable ramp. You can also use this, the ramp cleat biscuit insert, just alone if you want to do sort of a decorative thing against the side of core pieces or on the side of a catwalk or whatnot. And this texture will be nice and smooth in our final factory pieces. We have another biscuit insert. This is the metal ladder biscuit insert. So the same colors, same sort of textures as the catwalks. It has a little baked in half biscuit on the back. So you can then just pop it in sort of any biscuit slot, something like that, and give your, uh, your characters a way to ascend to a higher level. It doesn't hold, like some of our ladders, it doesn't hold mini bases in the slot. Tried some versions like that, and they ended up just not looking good, so we decided to make one that looked cool and sort of worked with the rest of the family, and it's not actually functional. We have the metal short stairs. These are an inch wide, half an inch uh, deep, and a little longer than a half inch long. They feature the same 360 sculpting, so there's little ports on the bottom. This could be data ports, they could be jet engines. If you want to use it sort of upside down as sort of little bits of tech bits, you can put it up against your builds. And it has a biscuit slot on the back, so you can pop it onto the end of catwalks and 
use it like that. So it has the same texture as the catwalks on the top, so it transitions really nice and smoothly. Then we have the full size. These are the metal stairs. They have the same one inch width. They have a two inch by one inch footprint and they are an inch and a half high to the top step. If you use it in conjunction with the short step, you can then get up to exact two inch height, which is the height of all of our core pieces. Or if you pop it off and you have this on top of a floor, this will get you up to that two inch height. Also has a biscuit slot in the back so you can connect catwalks it has the same catwalk texture on the top, so it'll seamlessly transition. As well as this will have this like engine textures on the bottom, so you can use it as like a jet engine if you put it up against the side of your build. Why not? This uh, once again, these are rough. The prototype has a bunch of nubs on here that'll be all smoothed out, so have a nice, crisp, smooth texture in the final. And our last piece is the catwalk pylon. So this is the chunkiest piece in the bunch. It has a two inch by one inch footprint. And this base section here is half inch high. The whole thing is two inches high. This is half inch high. So it is the same size as our floors. So you can build it in line with any of the Starforge floors. You could also build this as, this is two inches high, which is the same height as all the core pieces. Of course, you can build it on top or freestanding or whatnot. It has catwalk texture on the top so that the catwalks will transition really smoothly to it, as well as the stairs. And it has catwalk texture on the bottom, so you can use it inverted and connect catwalks to it or stairs or any of the bits. This was the only one that will have an anchor magnet in it. So there will be in here, there will be an embedded anchor magnet, which will allow it to stick magnetically to our terrain trays for secure building. It also has a variety of biscuit slots in it. So those biscuit slots on both sides of the floor and on the front and the back of the floor. So there's four on the, the bottom part of it. Uh, there's a biscuit vertical biscuit slot on top, so you can invert one and connect these together for doing really high builds, or you can connect the catwalks to it vertically if you want, or who knows what you're going to use it for. As well as the side here, this design is actually changing. So right now it only has two biscuit slots. It's going to change to something that's more of a four-way biscuit slot like this. So you'll be able to slot in biscuits both horizontally and vertically in four spots. So it'll give you tons of ways to connect this to other pieces and you can rotate 90 degrees to get anything to work. All right, so those are all the pieces in the family. Let's take a look at how these things work together. All right, so let's look at the basics of building with the catwalks as catwalks. We're gonna start with this little four by four build to use it as an example. So before we even actually get to catwalks as catwalks, we'll use them as, as floors, right? Because they are the same half inch thick and one inch wide as our floors. So if we wanted to, we could take this room, we could do something like this, right? We could pop these in to make or we can make a decorative floor there you can pull it back in if we wanted we could put door on there and have it a uh, sort of path leading into the doorway or something we could also do the same trick but invert them we could put these down and use them as like exposed pipes on the floor so it makes it like a more industrial area or whatnot. You could also just put them, like we could put them on top of the floor, similar to this, right? So we could take, so I put a pipe cap in there, sort of end it off. You can just put them on top of the floors as like exposed pipes and then that becomes like a little hazard or difficult terrain or an area to interact with. Put an air something like that. And we could put pipe caps, end caps on there to dress those up if we wanted to. We could also do the same gag where we're using them as floors. We could biscuit a bunch together, something like this, right? And then use this as a platform. You could suspend this or use it as a separate area or a variety of ways. You can put them sort of as many as you want together using biscuits to make platforms of various sizes and shapes. 
let's now go up, right? So we've seen them in the floors, we've seen them on top of the floors, let's go up. So the first thing we're gonna need to do if we're bringing our catwalks up is have something to support. So the easiest thing to do is take some pylons, take a, uh, we're gonna take a four inch catwalk here, we're gonna put biscuits on both sides. We're just gonna pop it into pylons and make a little freestanding unit. So this now is a freestanding catwalk that we can put anywhere, right? We can put it in this room, we could just freestand it out anywhere we want. It's the easiest thing to do is just pop some pylons in. Um, you need at least two points of connection and then you can start stringing, stringing uh, catwalks out. You could throw a ramp on the end, you could throw a ladder on the side if you wanted. We could that on there. Now there's a way to get up. You do something like that. You could also connect using the accessory wall. So this, we have an accessory wall down here. Accessory wall has a biscuit slot on the front and the back up at the top of the level. So in this case, we have a four inch and a two inch that are biscuited between two of the accessory walls with a couple of floors there and the whole thing's biscuited together. It's one unit. So we could take that and we could just slide that in right into our room. And if you flip over, let's say we flipped over the section, had an elevated area in your room. You could use the little half inch extension, right? We could pop this half inch extension in there and then it would connect really smoothly up to the sides, something like that. Or we could do something like, we slip that one. Um, that freestanding, remember we had those freestanding pylons. We could put these on the lower part of the, uh, there's a lower biscuit slot. We were using the upper before, we could use the lower biscuit slot and then connect here and have these uh, connect sort of seamlessly to this raised area up here. You could also support the pieces besides using the biscuit slots here, the biscuit slots here, or the pylons, we could also, we could take the short metal stair, use the biscuit slot on the back, biscuit that on, and now we have a, a freestanding extension that we can, we can put anywhere, right? So we can balance that here. You could have two of these and do something like that. You could connect it to pylon, now we have sort of the freedom to kind of put it anywhere because it's freestanding. So using this, we can kind of freestand. You can then balance it on anything you want. Anywhere else. If you want to introduce curves into your catwalks, it's easy if you're just connecting them to pylons and freestanding it. As soon as you want to start connecting to the elevated biscuit slots, you're going to end up needing the half inch extension pieces. Uh, let's put this over here so we can see it better. The biscuit slots are centered on the two inch. So it means if you're going around, you're going 90 degrees, you're gonna be off by half an inch because this slot is centered on the two inches rather than on the one inch. If it was on the one inch, you'd be in line. In this case, it's off. So we would need to put a half inch extension here, biscuit that in, and then that gets you back in line. So if you find yourself out of line, just start putting half inch extensions in until you kind of, you line back up and then you can connect and just build like everything else. Once you have catwalks in place, you're also probably gonna want ways to get up there. So stairs will fit nice and clean against these if you're building at the top of any of the accessory walls or core pieces, stairs get you up to that height, you can pop a ladder in like that and the ladder will hit the ground and you can pop the ramps in and that'll be adjustable depending on whatever height you're at. And this ramp, uh, this prototype is a little loose but this will be a nice and tight fit. Also, if you are using the stairs and you get into combat, we've made the overhang on the stairs such that it'll hold the bases on most RPG minis. The overhang is too small to hold the bases for Space Marines, but you know, Space Marines don't use stairs anyway, so. Finally, you can use the catwalks to do sort of cantilevered 
walkways. You just pop your biscuit in and use them on the exterior biscuit slots on your core pieces and then you can have a suspended, you can have walkways sort of around the outside of your building or the inside of your room like so you can extend out uh, your playable space, the raised space. You can also do a similar technique by using the backs of the accessory walls. So the backs of the accessory walls have a biscuit slot up here. So you could biscuit your, cat, your catwalks between two accessory walls on the inside or on the outside, or you could do something like this. Let's say we wanted to put an exterior room attached to this. So the slider slopes down. Yep. If we wanted to connect another building, right, we have a little, some sort of exterior structure. We biscuit into the back of the accessory wall, connect to the, these are inverted core pieces, we're just connecting to the biscuit slot there. Now we have a nice catwalk between them. And if we want to get up, we can use our stairs, that or our ladder. Uh, or a ramp. Now you have two connected areas with a dangerous walk. And let's say we want to make it a little more dangerous. You can do a technique using negative space to up the danger, right? So if we took, this is our magma river uh, terrain tray, metal terrain tray that our anchor magnets will stick to it. So now this is a dangerous area. So let's take an even longer catwalk section. So this is a four inch catwalk and a two-inch catwalk, and then a little platform built by biscuiting together a bunch of the catwalk. So now we have a real long, dangerous run that we get to, and if we want to make something more lively, we could take, this is the little metal corbel, pull accessory holder, and we could put the arm on here, so maybe this is a, a sensor arm or a cattle prod or something that they have to navigate if so they're going across and throw them into the lock. So now this is a very dangerous looking encounter using uh, negative space under the catwalks always makes everything look more dangerous and look more exciting. All right, now let's look at how we use these pieces to build pipelines. So to build the catwalks as pipes, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is pair a bunch together. I put a biscuit in there. These prototypes are a little stiff, so it's kinda hard to get down. It'll be a little easier with the final Dwarvenite versions. You're gonna wanna biscuit a bunch of these together to make pipes. They tend to look Finished, more finished if you put the pipe end caps in there, but you don't have to. So you just get a get a bunch of these paired up, put it in there, and you can just start building in line, right? This makes a simple pipeline, gives you uh, gives you cover, or some sort of partial cover for RPGs. You can use the pipeline rules for uh, 40k. Real simple, basic build. You can take the corners and start making more interesting shapes, right, from on, line them up, and the like. You can also use, like, your exposed sides if you want to then build off branches, something like that, on, right, make multi, multi-faceted branching pipelines. To make it look sort of more cohesive with your build, you're gonna wanna figure out some way to terminate everything. So, Simplest way is using the terminus, right? You can just pop that on and boom, your pipes are going into the ground. You could also use these in multiple places. You could have multiple points of termination. Um, oh, once you actually have something you like, you're probably gonna wanna biscuit them together, right? So you can move them around as, as a unit, right? It's a little more pleasing when you move the whole thing and it moves as one unit. Right now we're just going fast and loose so they're all willy-nilly. You can terminate right up against a building or any other sort of flat object. So that's another way to do it. As well as you can use the pylon. So in this case I took more of the pipe end caps. I put two of those biscuit inserts on there to make it look like it's part of the pipeline. You could terminate your pipeline like that or you could put this up against the building and then terminate like that. You could also, you could put this like in line or up at an angle or something. You could do it like that. Maybe it ends something like that. And then you'd use this, you could accessorize this out. You can even build this in line, right? If it didn't have the, um, didn't have those, you can use it to build 
and um, like such. You could also turn your pipeline if you want at this point. Like you could put it up on up on end and have the caps top side. That looks better. Caps top side, something like that. If you want it all look cohesive, you could also build another fun little termination. Is this is the half inch extension piece with the the end cap on there, and this is the ramp cleat. So you could take both of those and then pop them into a uh, into the biscuits at the end and you could do a terminator that looks something like that and that looks like the sort of thing like if you could like yank and open if it's an access point and everything comes spilling out. Also because these are one inch diameter circles there's a ton of compatibility with non pipeline pieces. So we are sort of seeing it here with the pylon, right? You can put it up against the pylon because this is a one inch square. You can sort of put it up anyway against the pylon. You can do the same sort of thing with a ton of the pieces in Starforge. So like the multi-module here uh, terminates the one inch. So you can do something like you can build that in line, something like that, right? Or you could use this as a uh, termination point if you wanted. You could have it just end there or end up against that. Any sort of combination because it's the, the one inch, the one inch base fits really nicely up against this. Similar, things like the energy, what is this, power node? We've changed the name of this piece a bunch of times in development. So the power node, pop right over. You can also biscuit it on if you're worried, but it's a it's a pretty solid fit. So that'll let you then kind of terminate really interesting into the ground or into the side of a building. Turret cone works really nicely, right? Particularly, you could take the, the terminus, pop a biscuit in there. Pop that in, and then this becomes a little freestanding. Let's rotate it 180. You can pop that against the side of a building, or use this as a, uh, a way to terminate off against a pylon. This one looks like it particularly like it's, it's siphoning something out of the ground, right? The big cone base. So lots of different places you'll be able to terminate these because they end in a, uh, a one-inch diameter circle. Now that's just sort of building catwalks on the ground. Gets even more exciting if they start getting elevated. So very much like building the catwalks elevated, you're just going to take, you need something to suspend them, right? So in this case, we'll take a couple of pylons, pop some biscuits in there, and you can pop a pipeline between them. We start having an elevated pipeline. And if you want, we can do, we go around a corner, right? Make it turn. And here, the biscuits should hold everything together nice and secure. We can connect to any of the buildings, right? So we have our core pieces line up with the pylons, so we just can pop a biscuit in the side there. Then, right now we're making these elevated runs. So these are much more interesting, right? Because now they become a different sort of obstacle on the battlefield or make for really dynamic combat because you can, you can duck under them or stand on them or jump over them the like. One of the questions is, hey, how the heck do we get up here right to pylon height? So we're going to take, the easiest way to do it is using the terminus piece. I'm going to take two of these and I'm biscuit them together like this. We're going to stick that on the biscuit bone. And now that gets us back down to, uh, to ground level. And we can use this same technique to go into a side of a building. But if we want to actually biscuit that right to the side of a building and then run a, uh, a pipeline down on the ground, something like that. If we want to go up, let's say we want to get all the way up on top of the building, we can then use, say, hey, let's stick this guy right here for stability, biscuit it in. So I usually don't biscuit stuff together until I know what I'm, what I'm building. I audition it loose and then uh, I will biscuit in when it's final. And these prototypes are a little stickier than the uh, final biscuits will be. So we're gonna pop this on like this. This has the four-way biscuits because these ones are sideways compared to the rest of it. The rest of them are this way, these are going this way, but it'll work because of the four-way design. We'll pop that on, pop that on. And so that gets us up on top of the building. So we could then keep building up here, something like that. We can terminate it any of the sort of any of the other ways we can terminate it once we're up on top of the building and you can continue the same gag let's say we wanted to go 
let's say we wanted to go double high. I right, wanted to get something all the way up to here. We can do the same trick. Let's see if we, how high it goes. If you're finding that you're not at the right height, these determinist changes in half inch increments. So here it's one inch high. If you rotate it like this, it gets you another half inch up and you can sort of, you can use that to figure out where exactly you want to get. So if we wanted to go up into the side of the building, oh, that's sort of just arbitrarily in the side of the building. If we wanted to go up higher, we realize, oh wait, I need two of these. So let's see with this, this and this would get me to the side of the building. If I want to get up further, I want to put a two inch in here. So let's see where this guy lands. We're going to put a two inch pipe section in there. And I think, is this going to get me up? Yep. Also, you could use the, um, the power node in line if you wanted to get another way to get up a half inch. So that can terminate like that. You can build and keep building from there. So those are all of the pipeline basics. Let's go look at how all of these pieces work in some actual builds. So here's an example of all those building techniques with the catwalks and pipelines in an interior build. This is supposed to be like the engine room of a starship, or maybe it's the command center in a uh, factory, uh, some sort of industrial area for the players to explore. Maybe to have a firefight in. We're using all those techniques we walk through. Right? So right along here, the floor is paved with the catwalks, right, all in line. And Chris figured this little tricky thing out, right? So we have a little, a single, a one inch wide catwalk running off here, connecting seamlessly with the two inch section. So that's accomplished by just putting half inch extensions at each end, offset everything by half inch so these will line up really nice and connect seamlessly. Now it makes it look like sort of this is a designated walkway area. Over here we have terminus, biscuited to another terminus attached to two accessory walls. So there's a pipe coming off the wall. Uh, over here we're doing a similar technique using uh, the full corner, and then it's got a pair of half inch extensions either side, and this is connected to a pair of accessory walls. It gives a nice raised pipe. It's a nice hazard you can kind of, you can jump over it or slide under it and get somebody in there and give some interesting cover or on top of it to do some fun raised shenanigans. And that's connecting into the accessory wall, and then we're having this, because the top of the accessory wall is a nice one by one square and just pop the next terminus and go up this level and it feels like it's seamlessly going through that and then we flip the little one by two floors here so when this terminus goes down it feels like it's a special part of the floor that's designed to have it go down in there and i didn't biscuit all of these together i didn't put that one on but could have if you're going to probably be doing a sort of dense combat in there you might want to biscuit things together that are going to move so it doesn't get jostled around on the table uh over here we have Catwalk is catwalk is biscuited to the floors. Could probably just rest it on the walls here, but we biscuited it for security, and then it just has as the stairs with the short stair getting us up there. Could have also put this short stair biscuited it to a two by one, and just sort of cantilevered out a, uh, a little platform if we wanted to sort of center this. It would be kind of nice if the stairs were centered with this walkway, so it would all be kind of connected. Over here, this absolute monstrosity is showing all the sort of fun bits you can do with branching and multi-level pipes. So it's it's a whole bunch of the pipes connected together, starting from the accessory wall. We're using the end caps to kind of give it that real riveted pipe look. So terminus into another terminus to get us up exactly two inches. Then another return is going down, and this is going into the trapdoor floor where it has the clear uh, hex field. So it looks like it's in, I don't know, energy collector or something down there. And then it feeds into the back of this accessory wall. So we have a power node on top, and then through the accessory wall on the other side. So it feels like the pipe is going straight through the, uh, through the wall. It's kind of a neat effect. And then terminus coming down and down. And then over here, it's a it's just a pylon pushed up against it 
with a, a single two inch catwalk with the end caps on there. And that makes like a nice spot to put this console up against, right? It's a flat area to put the console up against. It feels like it's the sort of the, the control area for this whole rig. So it'd be fun to do uh, some sort of encounter in here. Maybe the players have to get to this and shut it down while they're coming under fire. Lots of interesting spots for cover, right? Or climbing or multi-level things. Someone could be climbing up and around. Lots of tight quarters, close combat in here. This is an example of using all those basic building techniques for an exterior build. This is sort of approximating a battlefield. It's all kind of clustered together for the uh, for the camera so we can see everything. If you were actually gonna use this battlefield, it wouldn't be quite as dense, right? You can take these features and put them wherever you want, but it's a good example of the sorts of things you could do. Starting right up front, uh, we're doing just that basic ground level pipeline, just connecting pairs of catwalks, biscuiting them all together, running it up the side of the building, terminating it in a multi-module, popping those pipe end caps in there. This becomes a real neat spot, right? You can use the uh, pipeline rules and 40K throw much of your space screens behind there, uh, or maybe it gives you some partial cover if it's RPG or Stargrave or whatnot. Right behind them, we have this just a little like a barricade or line of sight blocker, cool angle. This is made using two of the pylons, right? So two pylons here with two of the two inch catwalks biscuited in there. And then we have the end caps on there to sort of dress up the edge. So we were, we had a kind of an angle like that. So it feels like a fortified position that breaks the line of sight. But you could also just take the same thing and flip it around and use it as a, uh, right? You could use it as an extension platform or something as a way to kind of extend some of your elevated area. Lots of flexibility with these pieces. Over here, got the adjustable ramp going into a pylon, going to catwalks around a corner and biscuited to the side of this building. Uh, nice and stable thanks to the biscuits and plenty of playable space. And because we have the little cleats on this ramp, you can take like a uh, five man unit of space marines, use the cleats to hold them in place and you can retain coherence while climbing up the uh, catwalk. Coming over the other side of this big structure, uh, we have elevated pipeline here. It's biscuited to the uh, side of the core pieces, biscuited to the pylon, just terminating the ground using a pair of a pair of the corner catwalks, and it's got end caps all over to make it look really industrial. Um, you could play, you could throw marines up there too if you wanted, uh, as well some playable flat spots on the top. Coming around the size building, we have another one of the basic techniques we just took, terminus biscuited into turret cone. And now this is like a little fun freestanding feature that you can put, right? We put it against this building. You could put it kind of anywhere, right? It goes anywhere that has a flat spot you can throw it against. You could put it all the way against this pipeline if you wanted, sort of extend that out. I would take the caps out if we we're gonna do that. You could biscuit it in. Or you could take a pair of these and biscuit them together or something. Coming up the side of this main structure, we have four inch catwalk biscuited to the side of the core pieces with the short stair there is biscuited out to extend us over to these stairs. The reason we push these stairs out is so that the top will be playable. If you wanted, you could once again throw a uh, throw your unit up there. Tons of playable space on the top of this building. So you can get it. You get a ton of models up here if you want them. The top of this we've got more four inch catwalks in line as floors. So we've inverted the core pieces, biscuited these together to floors to make the, this roof surface here. And then it goes into a pair of inverted pylons. So what we can do is we have a barricade on the front here to give us some character, but we could pop the barricade out if we want and just actually expose those pylons. And maybe it looks cooler without the barricade, right? So that's two pylons inverted, biscuited to the rest of the core pieces, then with a couple of end caps and it has a kind of a neat industrial feel on the front there when you can sort of see that exposed bit makes a more interesting shape and then we're doing the same gag on the back here and then topping it off with this is a uh, it's out retreat this is the power node with the console up against it and a pair of corner catwalk corners 
there, and then it's got the uh, end caps all over there to sort of seal off the exposed area. So this becomes like this big chunky thing. In this case, we're using it to break up the silhouette of this building, make it more interesting, but you could pop this sort of anywhere on your battlefield, right? This is a big chunky feature. You could throw down anywhere, or it's a neat sort of narrative objective uh, or whatnot. Something you have to get to and interface with before the bad guys stop you. And then coming, coming up here, we have another adjustable ramp feeding us into this platform. So this platform is built, it's just using five of those four inch catwalks all biscuited together. And then on the side here, we have a pair of pylons using the vertical biscuit on the top to hold them together. So the top one's inverted, the bottom one's upright. And then those are biscuited to the, uh, the side of this platform. And you could make these platforms however big you want. Just keep biscuiting pieces together until you have the desired size. So there's lots of cool shapes and sizes you can do with these. And then on this side, we biscuited a, a couple of ladders there and then have a nice continuous run. So if you were using this for Shatterpoint, something this is four inches high, so you have to use the jumping rules or you can use the ladders here as an egress point that's over the three inch height area. And there's a ton of space on the top here, right? You can get a ton of models up on the top, lots of playable, uh, playable space up there and you can just keep extending you can biscuit more of these and make bigger all sorts of multi-level platform nonsense so hopefully this gives you an idea of some of the building possibilities if you're doing exteriors the catwalks and pipes so our final build example is showing some compatibility between the catwalks and pipes and our wilderness pieces in this case our mountain slime and this is kind of like a diorama build just showcasing some of the ways they could play together. Not a ton of playable space in here, although you could probably run a little RPG adventure. So starting over here, we're using short steps and a two inch catwalk to make a little platform and feeding that up the stairs and up to this little computer terminal area. The fun gag that we did over here is we wanted the steps to be at the top of the steps to be two inches high, which is the height of the escarpments. So we just put the two inch two inch catwalk down and then pop the steps right on top of that and they get to the top. These are now level. And then over here we took two inch catwalk, put a pair of short steps on them, metal short steps, biscuited on a little freestanding platform. And they're using that to bridge us over here and there's a little playable space to run this guy. One something thing we could have done alternately is we could have just pull this out. We could use, put the steps there and then use this little freestanding platform to bridge it, something like that. And that's a little more dramatic. Right now you could fall off this thing and there's more space to play up here. Uh, so in an alternate way, we could have approached that thing. Over on this side, we have a power node connected to terminus, connected to another terminus, terminating in a multi-module. And this is just showing that because the escarpments are a true two inch height and everything here works in true inches, uh, it's really easy to get up to escarpment height. You can do the same thing for drop and going with a, a, a pipeline on the ground that then transitions up on top of this, the exact same height as the core pieces if the core pieces uh, were inverted. So it's just like getting up onto a building. And in fact, you could build the core pieces in line with these mountains really uh, nicely and easily as well. And then the final bit here, is this little pipeline run. So we're starting at the bottom with a turret cone, and then that goes into an energy unit, which has a terminus in it, and that gets us up to, this is now a total of two and a half inches high, because we wanted to get the top of this pipeline at two and a half inches, the bottom at two inches, so it's at escarpment height, because we're coming up here with this T-junction, and then this four incher feeds right into this end cap escarpment, and this has paired peg holes in it. So we're using the biscuit holes, the outside edge, the part that looks like, uh, it's kind of like the hot dog coming out of the bun there, that takes paired pegs. So we're using any of our older bits that have paired peg systems. Those paired pegs can fit right into the biscuit hole. So this whole thing is connected and can move it around as a unit. So this lets us connect these right to any of our paired peg bits. So we could also peg in a, um, a catwalk and sort of have suspended catwalks crisscrossing between anything like Titan's Tooth or anything that has paired pegs, you could connect out that way. 
So then this pipeline runs around the uh, corner here and into the concave. And the fun little gag we did here is uh, it's a four incher going into the cave, but then beneath it, it's just a two incher bisqueted in underneath. So the bottom part terminates when it gets to the cave, the top part keeps going. So it's like the uh, pipe is actually set into the ground there. Hopefully this gives you an idea of some of the many possibilities for building the catwalks and pipes in with wilderness and mountains. Since all the wilderness is on a true one inch scale and this is all a true one inch scale, there's lots of compatibility. We haven't even discovered all of it yet. And that's everything you need to know to get started with our catwalk and pipeline system. If you want to see more, check out our Starforge playlist. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on our Discord or our forums. Thanks so much for watching. And now it's back to the future. Anvil. Doot doot.